before we broke for lunch, we did a little preparatory exercises. In actual practice, when we meditate, one of the biggest distractions is thoughts about other things. So that we do not think of other things, the system of using a mantra has been introduced. What is a mantra? It is just a few words which don't have any meaning with anything outside. A good mantra is that where the words have some meaning with some experiences inside. If we repeat those words and think about those words, then our attention does not think of outside things. That is the advantage of using a mantra in meditation. Some of you may already have a mantra. You may be using some words for repetition in your head during meditation. If you are already used to having some words, then in the next exercise, please use those words. If you have never heard of a mantra, and do not have any words to use, then make up a few words. Any few words that mean something about love for your beloved. So that when you repeat those words, your thought remains on your beloved. And does not wander outside. Now you can pick up your own words, it can be one, two, three, five words, but uh, whatever words you pick up, you have to repeat them during the next exercise. But, but don't repeat them with your tongue, repeat them with your mind. If your tongue also moves in the beginning, that is all right. With practice, you will find the tongue is not needed for repeating mantra. Moreover, when you repeat the words, you must listen to what you are repeating. If your tongue keeps on repeating words and you keep on thinking of other things, that is no good. Therefore, when you repeat the words, <coughs> you must repeat them and listen to them inside. It's the listening that concentrates your attention. We have a mind and we have a soul. The mind always speaks and the soul always listens. Always remember, whatever speaks in our head is our mind. Whoever listens is our soul. 
If you listen more, then you are closer to your own self. Now are you ready for this meditation? Okay. <coughs> now you close your eyes, put your body in an upright position, so you, so you don't go to sleep, and after closing your eyes, sit at the same place behind the eyes where you sat earlier. Now sitting there, you start repeating the words internally very slowly and listening to the words. Stay in the center of the head. Repeat the words very slowly. So you can listen to them. No other thought, only the words of mantra. Stay in the center. If any pictures come in front of you, don't follow them. Let them pass from one side to the other. If you see any colors, don't follow them. If you see any light, don't follow it. Take it as a TV show, it's a tele television show. On the screen in front of you. Don't move forward. Stay back in the center. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and welcome back. How did you find, did you think the place inside is a peaceful place? How many found it was a peaceful place? How many of you liked this experiment? Very good. Did anyone have a difficulty in Ar staying inside? Ar 
little more practice. What we are doing here is a very small sampling. Normally when I have a meditation workshop, it lasts at least three days and can go up to seven days. In September, we are having a three days meditation workshop in Chicago. In three days, one can see results. In October, we are having a meditation workshop for seven days. In that long period, we can have long sessions of meditation and we can see the results. Today, Today you are only getting introduction to it. It takes some time for the mind to concentrate attention behind the eyes. You just practiced how to use the words of mantra to prevent other thoughts. But that is not the only distraction. You might have noticed the other people's faces come in front of you. To avoid that, we put the face by imagination of our beloved, who we love, a person whom we love. If we feel we have real love for a person, his face should be kept by imagination. Higher meditation will only succeed when we have feeling of love and devotion. So it's good while we are doing our repetition of Simran or words or mantra, we also keep the face of the beloved in front of us. Now we will try a few minutes of meditation with the face of the beloved in front. But it should be an actual face of a person. Not a picture. Not a diagram. <coughs> actual person that you have met. Who you love. So when you now meditate, while repeating the words, only see the picture of your beloved. Now close your eyes, let's begin. Again, sit upright in your body, just to avoid going to sleep. And once we think we are inside the head, <coughs> then start repeating the mantra very slowly and listen to the mantra and look in front at the imagined picture of your beloved. But stay in the center. Don't move forward.
Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and welcome back. You can rub your eyes a little bit like this. And if you feel your hands and feet are little sleeping, then you can move them also like this. Your knees and feet also. It's just an example. Now there is one third thing left. That apart from the thoughts which the mind creates as a distraction and we can't concentrate, which we take care of by repetition of words called mantra, we take care of the other images and faces it brings up by taking care of the face of one person, one beloved. Third thing is some outside sounds can be a distraction. You will notice that when you are in a state of meditation, even little sounds become too loud. Like if a bus or a car is going outside, we normally don't hear in meditation, you hear it very clearly. The ticking of a clock, for example, never bothers us, but during meditation it becomes very loud. Our heart is beating all the time, we never listen to it. In meditation sometimes it starts, we can listen to it. We are breathing normally all the time and we never notice it, but during meditation we can even hear the sound of our breathing. All these are distractions to meditation. To avoid these, we have to use a method called listening to the sound inside. There is a sound in each one of us in our head already ringing. With, but when we are putting our attention outside, we don't hear that sound. When you start meditating for some time, you will start hearing a sound inside. The sound takes many forms. Sometimes just the sound of an echo. Sometimes the sound like a passing train. Sometimes sound of a thunder. Of a sound of a waterfall. Sound of little crickets. Sound of little bells. Some, sometimes sound of a big bell. All these sounds are naturally inside us. During meditation, you will find when you concentrate your attention and don't think of the body, these sounds start coming in. 
When any of these sounds come, start listening to the sound. It is not coming from outside. Even if you close your ears, you can still hear it. That sound, if you start hearing, it is a very good uh, way to prevent any outside sound for interfering. This is the third important part of meditation. To listen to the natural sound inside. Ultimately, the sound will become like the sound of a big bell. Like you hear a church bell or bell, or bell in a temple. Sometimes we wonder why these bells were introduced in every place of worship. The reason is the body is the best temple of worship. And this bell sound is a natural sound inside us. When our attention gets withdrawn up to the head, we will hear the bell sound very strongly and loudly. The bell sound inside is different from the other sounds. The other sounds do not pull our attention. The bell sound pulls the attention automatically. It is not a shrill sound. Shrill sound, not with a big edge, very soft, melodious sound. It's a soft and melody. When you hear that sound, you feel so much peace inside. That sound is in all of us. When we reach that bell sound, we don't have to do any other meditation except listening to the sound. It will automatically take us to inner experiences. I hope many of you will be able to hear the sound pretty soon after some practice in meditation. We can try now for some time, see if you can hear a sound inside. Put your attention in the center of the head, repeat the mantra, and when you feel there is a sound, stop the mantra and try to listen to the sound. So close your eyes and let us try. <coughs> Go back to the center of the head. <coughs> Repeat the mantra slowly 
till the sound comes. If you hear some sound coming inside the head, then stop mantra and listen to the sound. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. We have done some sp uh, sample of exercises. How many of you enjoyed them? Did you like them? How many of you think you can keep on doing them? Oh, very good. Good candidates here. Uh, if, I, if I get a chance some future time to come on a three-day meditation workshop, then uh, some of you may get a chance to practice real long meditation with me. It will depend on widest Bhutaskas who is sitting at the back. And if there he is. And if he can organize at some point later on, I will be very happy to do it. Now we'll have some time for questions and answers. If you have any questions on what we have been doing, you can ask now. If you have questions on something else, you can also ask now. I have in my head the constant sound, a kind of um, noise. noise. So, but maybe that is a kind of functional, some distraction disorder. No, it is very different. If it is hurting and not comfortable, that can be a functional problem. But if it is soft and musical, it's not. If she listens to the sound, if she listens to the sound and it becomes better, then it's a good sound. I hear it, you know, without doing anything. Yes, we, we, so many of us have that sound with us, but when we practice meditation, we find out how real it is or not real. Once you practice meditation, the sound will be with you all the time. But that sound which is internal does not interfere with the sound outside. Which means, even if the sound is loud, you drop a pin, you can hear the drop of the pin also.
it does not interfere with the outside sound. So it, it means that it's impossible that it would, uh, you know, uh, overclose those, you know, uh, outside sounds. Uh, that this inner sound, sound, uh, you know, she's afraid it can be, become too loud, too strong. No, it does not become strong because it is so melodious. It never interferes with any of your work. But uh, that sound could be so, you know, intense that it could, you know, close, you know, cover all other from outside sounds. For example, I hear rain constantly, and sometimes it just, you know, so clear and obvious that I feel it even if I sit safe in my room. That sound is not heard by these ears. Even if the sound inside is loud, a little whisper by somebody can be heard. The inner sound is not being heard by these ears at all. The eardrums are not involved. For all outside sound, the eardrums are involved. People hear the sound very loudly, and nobody else can hear, and they can hear whisper of other people. So nothing to worry. I want to ask about the visions which come in during the meditation. We should not follow them, even if they are interesting. By following them means moving from your center to go towards them. If the vision comes and you watch it, it is all right. But do not move from the center to go forward toward the vision. And this is so long as you are aware of your body and your head. When you become unaware, you can do whatever you like. Very often when the vision comes in front, if we move towards it, the vision disappears. Similarly, when you go toward the sound, the sound disappears. They are both coming because you are in the center. When your body loses awareness, you don't know where your body is, then you can move towards the vision or do whatever you like. So long as we are aware that we are still in this body, trying to practice meditation in this body, in this head, we have to remain in the center. Meditation, 
during the real meditation, when we do it without you, when there is no teacher who could count to five, when should we get out to finish meditation? When they get tired. If you like it and enjoy it, keep doing it. Twenty-four hours. Yes, in a way, repetition can be done twenty-four hours. If you practice repetition of mantra twenty-four hours, it becomes very easy during meditation times to withdraw attention. There are some people who were still requested for interviews, personal interviews. So if they have no more questions, then we can go forward to the interviews. So I want to say I was very happy to meet all of you. Hope to see you again when I come to Kaunas. Or when you, or when you come to United States of America. Or when you visit the United States of America.